G'day and welcome. Today we're interviewing Nick Shimon from uh, Challenger and uh, welcome Nick. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, just first of all, if you can give us a bit of your own uh, background in the uh, financial services industry and, uh, and then a bit of background on Challenger itself. Yes, certainly. So I've been um, in financial services for about nine years now. Uh, I started my career at, uh, at Aviva um, yeah. as a relationship manager there for many years and then moved into the business development space. On yep. both the, so working across both the platform and the insurance um, game as yep. well. So working with, with um, advise, network of advisors mainly based around Melbourne. Uh, and also regional Victoria, yep. assisting them with growing their businesses and, and so forth in, in, in both insurance and, and, and platform. And then came across the Challenger about um, two years ago. Right. And uh, yeah, a bit about Challenger and what's Challenger's main focus? So Challenger um, is mainly focused on, I represent, I suppose, first of all, the life company, which is a provider um, to of retail annuities to the Australian market. Right. Uh, and we are the largest provider in, in that space yes. of guaranteed retirement income streams. Um, we do have a separate business, um, which is separate from the life business, which is named now and branded Fidante Partners, yep. which owns about 10 boutiques right. uh, and own, only owns a, a small portion of that. I think on average it's about 20%. Um, and those boutiques you know, really own their own businesses and run their own business. And we, we simply just do the distribution and right. the research and administration component, yep. and we leave the asset management up to them. Um, but we're, we're a completely separate business, so everything Challenger branded today really is just a life company yes. and, any, and any of the guaranteed products that we offer. Yep. Over the years, Challenger's uh, consolidated that annuity market, um, yep. and uh, I think a lot of clients find it a bit confusing, all the different brand changes all the time. Uh, can you give us a bit of background about what businesses have been purchased and what's been consolidated under the Challenger brand? Yes, certainly. So now um, all of our annuities are branded Challenger. Uh, we have acquired um, over the last five or six years uh, AXA, MetLife and Citibank. Uh, we've absorbed those books and we've also rebranded them Challenger. Right. Um, so we've, we've taken over those as a responsible entity and, yep. and certainly um, from, from a client's perspective, um, they would have a Challenger policy now right. to make it Pretty clear and simple. Yeah, fantastic. Look, can you just give us a, a, a really a basic description of what an annuity is and uh, and what different types are available? Yeah, certainly. So an annuity, in simple terms, is really capital and income, which is guaranteed by an APRA regulated life company. So APRA are, are there to uh, ensure that we are uh, investing our money appropriately, and they. Um, stress test our assets on a monthly basis to ensure we've got yep. enough capital adequacy and enough cash in reserves to provide that guarantee and that certainty over our, over our, our products. Yep. An annuity can be taken for as short term as one year and as for a, as long term as the client's life expectancy. Right. So we have term annuities which, can, uh, which have a, a residual capital value option and what I mean by that is um, similar to a term deposit, you can secure your money up for a set period of time and yes. nominate your income payments. But further to that, you can also um, nominate how much capital you'd like to be returned over that duration of your investment as well yep. to create a, a certain level of income for yourself um, over a set period of time. Right. Yep. So, so quite flexibility, flexible. Um, and what would be the most common use for an annuity uh, in this day and age? Well, uh, in, in today's world, um, really just um, looking at the client's expenses in retirement, yep. uh, they're used to certainty of income. Um, and during their working years um, and, and used to having a, a, a pay salary that doesn't go up, down, it hopefully goes up over yes. time, yep. they want to replicate that sort of um, peace of mind in retirement. So an annuity can really be uh, useful in creating that certainty and that level of income so there's no fluctuations with right. what's being received. So when, you, when you're purchasing an annuity, you're, um, you're purchasing an income stream and you're, that is set from day one and you know, what the share markets do with all the volatility yeah. we're seeing, that's got no consequence on the outcome Exa of the Exactly, year. and they can be really well blended with other assets to provide a level of certainty for perhaps maybe the client's fixed um, living expenses in retirement, so the stuff yeah. that's not negotiable, the right. stuff that we can plan for in terms of our retirement expenses, knowing that the groceries are X amount every month, yeah. our rent or, or mortgage or perhaps our uh, whatever it is for our daily living uh, needs, we can perhaps um, have that facilitated by an annuity yes. uh, where it's not impacted by the market downturns. So how do you see uh, annuities mixing in with uh, uh, our clients' uh, current arrangements? Do you see it as a, 
um, you know, a blend of income from one spot and you've still got your growth investments elsewhere? Or? Yeah, certainly I think there's a space for, for all other asset classes and clients do need to have some exposure to, to equities for long-term capital appreciation, but to mitigate having to sell in unopportune times and to provide them a bit of a hedge, um, we can certainly have an income floor which is guaranteed and is they can plan for and they're going to receive that irrespective of what the market does with their other asset classes. Yes. So the, the, I suppose the there's no sort of silver bullet solution. It's more about determining, um, you know, what works for that particular client and what level of income is needed for perhaps just the fixed living costs or the known outcomes in retirement, and maybe have that um, the annuity using useful for that part of their portfolio, and yeah. then blend it with the other assets to to give them a, a mix of um, market linked investments right. as well. And, and Annuities uh, obviously can still can play a part within the self-managed superannuation uh, fund industry to to provide that floor for their uh, for their regular income. Yeah, we we typically see a lot, a lot of SMSFs um, own an annuity for a set period of time. Um, a, an average SMSF may have exposure to investment properties, uh, direct equities, um, and perhaps some term deposits and again cash. Um, where an annuity can play a role is um, perhaps setting a time period for say three or five years and in decumulation phase or in pension phase um, perhaps using an annuity to fund their pension payments over a set period of time to allow the other assets to remain intact and not have to rely upon the distributions from the other assets right. or having to sell down those other assets in unopportune times and then replenishing that annuity once it extinguishes yes. over that period and then going again and resetting that strategy. Yep, fantastic. Um, it wasn't that uh, long ago when uh, annuities were utilised to uh, to reduce the, the assets test uh, uh, for the Centrelink um, uh, deeming. Um, that's well and truly gone since uh, 2007. Um, are there any other Centrelink benefits that annuities uh, have at the moment? There certainly are. Uh, not, not as favourable as they once were, uh, obviously, but um, in terms of our annuities today, uh, anything that's sort of six years and zero RCV um, or a lifetime annuity has a deductible amount. Uh, whether it be superannuation or non-super money, um, the, the Centrelink assess it and treat it a uh, lifetime annuity as a nil RCV annuity. Right. So there is a deductible amount which will offset, which isn't deemed um, by Centrelink, and also uh, the asset will reduce by that level as well Fair over that duration. Right. So there is definitely um, a Centrelink consideration today, and it's yes. definitely a populist, popular strategy in terms of maximising a client's Centrelink entitlements. Right. And is there a flow on effect onto the uh, nursing home uh, strategies with the income tested fees, which can be quite substantial after people have uh, paid their uh, their bonds in a hostel scenario? So can we utilise an annuity to benefit nursing home people? It, it definitely can. And we, we actually have an annuity which we've recently launched that actually fits very well in that space um, and provides um, a client with a, a total uh, abolishment of the income tested fee. Yep. Um, that the Centrelink, uh, sorry, the aged care facility actually assesses in the same way Centrelink does from an income test perspective, um, which is purchase price over their life expectancy, which will eliminate um, any, any deemed income. Fantastic. Um, with governments uh, you know, indebted around the world at the moment and the, the prospect that they're going to uh, um, inflate their way out of their problems by printing a lot more money, inflation is uh, you know, really going to be a bit of an issue. With an annuity being a conservative type of investment, can we uh, you know, hedge ourselves against the, the eroding effects of uh, inflation, against the you know, cost of living? Certainly. So we do have an option for um, indexing. Uh, you, you can index an annuity with um, incremental increases that you, you can actually select from the start from 1% to 5%. Or with our lifetime annuities, you can actually choose CPI. So whatever the government said CPI, um, for that year is what your annuity can actually go up by so that you're not uh, you know, losing that purchasing power over time. So I think on average over, over 25 years your purchasing power almost, or your dollar almost halves. Yes. Um, to certainly keep up with that, with the increase in spending, you can actually link your annuities with real inflation um, to ensure that you've got, you've, you've, you've hedged for any, any real sharp spikes in inflation yep. over the long term. Fantastic. Very good. Thanks very much, Nick. I appreciate the time and uh, thank you for coming up and uh, um, giving us the, the information and uh, conducting the interview. Um, thank you very much for uh, uh, having a listen and if you've got any questions, uh, please make contact. We're happy to, uh, to catch up and, uh, and have a yarn about what we've spoken about today. Thanks very much.